Hello YouTubes! What's well, raining on my face? So I got a message from Sister Michelle Schulte and she's like, look how webs, look at these! She showed me this cool picture of a skull tiki torch and I'm like, I can do that. I can probably do that better. So that's what we're going to do today. I've been making my rounds to all the dollar stores. I got some tiki torches. I got some uh, grass skirts. I got some rope. We're going to make us some creepy tiki uh, skull torches. It's going to be an option heavy video for like a cannibal barbecue. So let's get cracking. We got a lot of crap to do. Okay, YouTubes, so like I said, I've been shopping. I went over to the uh, Dollar General, General Dollar, all the dollar stores, been scooping up supplies for this build. Uh, these are just $3 tiki torches from General Dollar, Dollar General, whatever, Family Dollar, I don't know. Um, we're gonna make these work. It's gonna be an option heavy video. Obviously, you're making torches, and if you're gonna use them for Halloween, you don't want these around kids. So as an option, uh, you can use candles, uh, like an LED candle. Uh, just for size comparison, a Loctite can is the exact same size as these uh, canisters uh, that are gonna have the uh, fuel in it. Now, because this is fire, like I said, you can do an uh, option where you can do a LED candle instead, when you don't want open flames, bike kids, and trick-or-treaters nowhere, unless the air is completely cordoned off and there's an adult there, because you don't want all little kids getting burnt up. So we're gonna rock with these today. What we're definitely gonna need is skulls. If you're gonna do the LED route, you can use the plastic skulls from anywhere you can use them from home depot or whatnot but for us we're gonna go more realistic we're definitely gonna go the fire route so we're gonna use some nightmare maker skulls uh these are rigid foam they're awesome skulls i already did a video on this so i'll link it down below for you guys to show you how i actually make the skulls out of rigid foam and i was playing around and ordered some uh bjb uh gray foam pigment uh this is for urethane foams you can pigment it so i've actually got some gray skulls made. So that, that turned out pretty cool, just as it kind of mix it up a little bit, a little bit different. So I've got plenty of rope from the Dollar Tree. Uh, we're gonna use a lot of Dollar Tree supplies. Got one of those little hula grass skirts from the Dollar Trees, we'll use those too. But we need mostly skulls to start with, like I said. So I'm gonna demo all these skulls, we're getting a bunch ready, and then we're gonna go ahead and start getting ready to put our big old hole in the top of these saws to feed a canister through. Now you're gonna need some uh, tools. This is a three and one eighth inch drill bit. I go big, I don't wanna use a smaller one. We are gonna use a smaller auger bit, I'll show you guys that. But we're gonna get set up, we're gonna start knocking some holes in skulls so we can actually fit the skull right on top of our whole canister and our little basket. So let's get cracking on that. Okay, YouTubes, I got our skulls made. Forgive the mess, never trust a guy with a clean workshop because he's a slacker. So I made up all our skulls. I took a little wood saw and I just shaved down the bottom is flat so it's less material to drill through. So I got all our skulls here ready to go. I got one in the bench vise wrapped around an old sheet to keep from crushing it like I said. And we're going to go ahead and pop a hole through. So for this you're going to need a three, three and a half inch hole saw bit just to be on the uh, safe side. Uh, three and an eighth should work for us. And I've got a one and an eighth inch paddle bit but usually I like to go with a one inch paddle bit but I'm here at the shop so I've got a one and an eighth. I'll make it work. So we're going to go ahead and drill right to the top of this guy, and we're gonna get, only get down about this far, so that's what the paddle bit's for, because uh, we're obviously gonna be stopped by the back of the drill bit. So let's go ahead and just pick a center anywhere, tilt them up like so, stab in, and we'll drill. Okay, so now we got us a big monster hole on top of the skull, but we've gotta get all the way through the bottom to get that nice round hole that we can stick over our, uh, our torch. So this is where the paddle bit comes into play. And these are cheap, you can get them at the hardware store. I think like a one inch paddle bit's probably like five, six bucks. So we're gonna go ahead and drill out around the hole and then we'll chip it out so we can get deeper with the uh, big hole saw running all the way through. Just like so. Okay. Now, as you can see, foam's a mess. You either want to do this over a garbage can or a place you can sweep it up or vacuum up. Normally I do this outside, but uh, I don't want the animals getting into all this stuff and eating it and the birds and the squirrels and all that stuff, so it's not good. So we're just gonna go ahead and chip out this stuff. I should probably use a screwdriver, but that's okay. Flathead screwdriver. So that gives us a little more room to run our bit down. So we're gonna go back in and go slow. All right, we're there. All right, 
We're gonna drill again. Okay, YouTubes, so our boys all got pretty cool lobotomies. I think we're good to go to the next step. Uh, I'll start with the open face skull. We're gonna have to uh, go ahead and open all these guys up. Again, if you're doing the plastic skull, hey, congratulations, you're done. But uh, we don't do easy here. So one of my first steps I like to do with the teeth on these Nightmare Maker skulls, since they are rigid foam, I take a hacksaw blade. I like to just go between each teeth and open up that little gap, because it lets paint sink in there or whatever. It makes it that much more believable. So I always try and go through every skull, open that gap. That way if you want to pinch teeth out or knock teeth out, they pop right out of there. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to blow out all the eyes of all the skulls. You can leave them enclosed if you want to, but uh, I prefer them all the way through so it looks like a hollowed out skull. So we take our same old bit that we use to uh, help out our hole saw holes and we just blast the eyes out. Just dig them in there and there we go. Okay, so now we got some eye holes. And we'll go back later, I'll take a smaller bit and I'll drill out the nose. That way we've got uh, some room for foam to expand in there. With the mouth, with the open mouth skulls, same thing. I like to go ahead and just blow out the mouth. Oop. Okay. It's okay, if you blow out teeth, whatever, doesn't matter. Now I try and drill out this upper palate. So we got nice big hole. Come here, you bastard. And same under the chin, just to open up the jaw a little bit. Okay. So now we've got our major work done. This is what we're starting with. So now we got to go back in and we got a Dremel. So our big hole should be clean enough. If you want, you can go ahead and wind it out a little bit in the bottom. It don't matter. But I always like to go back with the Dremel air tool and that's how I clean out all my jaws and stuff like that. So I'll go right through an eye hole. Just wallow that guy out. Do the nose we have. Okay, YouTubes, so I've uh, drummed out all the skulls, beat them up a little bit. I've been going back with the hacksaw and making uh, marks and scratch marks on the top of the head, so it looks like they were scraping off uh, flush or whatever. I blew the teeth out of this one. Kind of looks like my Aunt Gertrude. You know, you gotta go see her at Christmas time. You ain't seen her all year, and you go to give her a hug and a kiss, and she uh, slips her tongue in your mouth, puts five bucks in your front pocket. Yeah, that's the one. Kind of reminds me of her. I just been using the hacksaw to uh, knock out teeth. Went ahead, got this guy, just bashing his eyeball. Looks like he's not having a good day at all. Maybe he stole the other tribe's pizza or something. I don't know. So I thought that was pretty cool. We left some teeth in him. Uh, we got another guy here, missing most of his teeth. Looks like the guy used to talk me at the flea market. We used to come up to me and borrow a cigarette and uh, like 250 and it's like, dude, I'm 14 years old. I don't smoke and the 250 I got is for a Pepsi and a Nutty Bar on the way out of here. So sorry, I can't help you. But yeah, uh, I just been kind of just randomly hitting up skulls and damaging stuff. So I think they're all pretty well done. I think we're about ready to move on to our next step, and that's gonna be torching them. These are rigid foam. Again, if you're using a plastic skull, hey, you're done, congratulations. Um, but because it says rigid foam, we are gonna be using fire. I wanna go ahead and use the fire. We're using a little blowtorch to kind of, uh, kind of stress these guys out more. I want to uh, get in there. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna use a campfire stick for roasting hot dogs. And this could be our way of distressing these skulls. So I'm just going to use a blowtorch. Jack it up here. And I just want to kind of just cook that surface a little bit. Just kind of brown it. And again, I got doors open. You don't want to be doing foam in, the, uh, in an enclosed room because this stuff does kick off fumes. But we're not going to set it on fire. We just want to make it look aged. If you go too close, it'll blister it. If you want to look like flesh, then you're good. Keep going. But uh, I just kind of want to darken this. So I've got to go through and knock out all these skulls. Brother man, brother man. Sorry, I don't have a cigarette. All right. Yeah, I just want to kind of darken these. And it already looks like a little aged skull. So I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna torch all these skulls, and then we're gonna go on to the next step, which is we're gonna paint the backsides. 
Okay, YouTubes, I'm back. I took these all outside and torched them with a little less uh, cancery. Uh, they all turned out pretty good, man. We used the torch as a base coat. Look at that Gertrude, man. She looks freaking awesome. Okay, so uh, I think our next step is I want to go ahead and I want to paint the insides of these skulls before we put them mounted on the torches. Uh, there's not too much black. I don't use black. I'm going to use uh, this heavy metal rust primer. It's just a red oxide primer, whatever. There's not a whole lot of black in the in the true world unless you're talking about like penguins and orcas. So I like to use brown. Really, rarely ever do I use true black. Um, we'll start with Aunt Gertrude here because she always had brown teeth anyways and smelled like freaking wet bread. I'm going to uh, just shoot the backside insides of her skulls. We just want to brown everything out. So you see inside of your Aunt Gertrude here? We just want to blast that brown. Now this will eat some of the foam a little bit, but that's okay, you can hear it crackle. Yeah, now generally on long cured foam, it doesn't bite as bad, but we're counting on this, giving us a nice little patina. And I want Aunt Gertrude to have her brown teeth. Okay, so we're gonna blast out our eye sockets. And we're gonna call that good. That way our backside of our paint is basically done. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock out all these skulls. When I come back, we're gonna start mounting these guys on the torches. Okay, YouTubes, so I got all the skulls basically based out on the inside. All we did was use some dirty, uh, rusty metal primer paint uh, just to make kind of like a, a pre-filth on the backside. Look at Brother Man from the flea market. He looks great. And all we've used so far is just a torch and uh, a little bit of spray paint on the backside. So we haven't even touched the outside yet, and that's how much grime we got. So if uh, you guys are doing the plastic skulls, got to jump back in now. So uh, we're going to start getting these guys mounted. Um, I thought I got a couple of options for you guys. Again, I love doing option heavy builds. We've got our $3 torch from uh, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, whatever. They sell them all over. Uh, we could actually use a piece of, uh, this is just my tack rags I use to clean up stuff and dust off cars that work when they get filthy. I bring them home. So I like that. Or we can go to our old time uh, creepy cloth, which everybody loves to use. So we'll go ahead and we'll rock the creepy cloth. We're just going to take some, drape it over our torch. It don't matter how. Just like so. All right, and then we're going to take our skull and we're gonna wedge it down on top. Sometimes these little wooden guys wanna grab the edge of the skull. You just take a pair of uh, pliers or a piece of screwdriver and you just bend them in a little bit. So I'm gonna shoot for about, maybe about an inch or so of that torch sticking up. So, so far, I think we're good. Uh, we are using rigid foam. Again, I wanted to test it, make sure the torch, you see how it burned. Uh, it took forever, and we are going to fiberglass over these. Again, if you guys are doing the plastic skulls, you can skip that step. Okay, guys, I got the skulls all mounted up on their torches. We're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, YouTube, so our torches are all mounted up. We've got our fire block from Great Stuff. This is a uh, fire retardant foam. It's bright orange. Since we are going to be using an oil-based burning flame, I want to go ahead and play it safe, and we're going to use this to kind of snug the can into the head. So as you can see, there's a little space back here under his head. We're just going to go ahead and shoot some in there to kind of steady the can into place. And just set it in there. We'll let it expand. We're going to do a little shot behind the eyes, kind of snug it into place. And I want to do a little bead around the top that will smash down when this does secure. Okay, YouTubes, I went ahead and got the great stuff set. Everything is shaved down. I ran a torch back over everything so you can see it's a little bit darker from the bright orange color it was. I poked some wooden balls in some of these guys for eyeballs. I put some tusks in some. I make resin tusks, so I figured I'd deck some out with some tusks. And uh, I think we're ready for fiberglass. We're going to go ahead and lock these guys down, put a coat of fiberglass over everything, and uh, let's do it. We build our stuff out here to be beat on, to be in the sun, to be frozen, uh, to fall down, wind storms. Uh, I don't know, I like building stuff one time, but one time only. So if you guys are building this along with me, uh, plastic guys, again, you can skip this step. Uh, if you guys, do you want to seriously attempt this build yourselves, man? Nightmare Maker sells these rigid foam skulls. You can do exactly what I'm doing. Buy yourself a $3 uh, Dollar General torch and some creepy cloth and some other stuff and go at it, man. A lot of this stuff is from the dollar store that we're going to use, so... We're gonna go ahead and get this guy brushed out. Actually, I'm gonna brush this guy out and then we're gonna brush the other four out and let those cure and then we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, I think we're good. Again, I got doors open because fiberglass is some hellacious stuff, guys. So, I just wanna be generous, brush a coat over all this whole thing, every little nook and cranny, and then I'm gonna go stick it on a horse outside on top of a uh, dollar store shower curtain so it can catch the drips. 
And with our wooden eyeballs, fiberglass right over them. All right, guys, I'm gonna fiberglass this whole thing to weatherproof it, lock it all together, lock all our foam down, hopefully help fireproof it a little bit. And when we come back, we're gonna jump on to the next step. Okay, YouTube, so it's been a day. The uh, fiberglass is all dry. I gave everything a quick scuff and I hosed it down with a coat of uh, satin clear. That way it still has sort of that little gooey kind of wet finish I like. I don't want to go completely matte. So uh, now we can start decorating these things. We gotta do our rope work next. Okay, YouTubes, I can hear you guys now. But cobwebs, they're just foam skulls. Why are you doing all this? Hey, the Hindenburg was just a balloon, all right? We gotta build our stuff to be tortured, to be beat, to be in ice and weather. We're gonna have fire going on on top. We and our stuff, bulletproof here. And you can see Ann Elfle here, I gave her some eyes. It's just wooden balls in there. Hers are a little bit smaller than everybody else's since she had uh, supposedly bad vision in real life, but she always managed to walk in anyway. You're taking a leak and your pants were down around your ankles. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get her fixed up. And I've got a whole bunch of stuff ready to use on these guys. I've got some uh, dollar store little uh, raffia skirts, the little uh, hula skirts. I got some dollar store twine from uh, Dollar Tree. I got some a uh, couple of slabs of fur from Amazon. I've got some leopard. I've got some uh, zebra. I got some permagrime brown. I got some permagrime black. I got some perma blood. Uh, we got some hula skirts. We got creepy cloth. I got a bunch of shells from the Dollar Tree. Uh, different assorted packs that when I used them I did my big uh, voodoo uh, mask. I've got some uh, wooden assorted beads off of other projects that are sort of just mixed and matched. We can throw some beads on the skulls if we want. I got a bunch of these coccyxes, coccyxes, crotch bones that uh, Brother Vic got from uh, Transworld or MHC. So uh, he gave me a handful to do something and play with so we're going to use these on the torches. And I got a bunch of hair pieces from the Dollar Tree and some old wigs. We can do some hair work on some of these guys, whatever. So, uh, but first, we gotta do our, our string work first. So, we're gonna get our Dollar Store rope and we're gonna split it apart, just like this. So, yeah, my dead mother, Edie Bonser, I'll link her below. You guys will show her some love, man. I had a total stroke of genius. So this is Dollar Store rope. You get 10 feet of it from the Dollar Tree and you can break it apart and make it into smaller strands. So you could do this literally up to like, I think 10 times. But some of these make, uh, smaller ropes so we're gonna go ahead and split all this up and i want to start lacing up all these skulls and you got our rope work done first let's do that now okay youtube so i got pizza man here uh, remember he's having a bad day from stealing other tribes pizza so i got one of these cossacks 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 crotch bones hold that skeeter i want to see if maybe i can slide this thing up in here oh yeah that'd be kind of cool check that out and i want to do some lace work and try and lace this up around his mouth or something like that so uh i think that'll be a cool look let's do that Okay, YouTubes, so I'm just going to try and feed this rope up into his head, go around his jaw. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Got a little excess here. And we can just kind of lace it up however you want. You know, we can come back down, go around to the back, tie off, maybe come to the nose, nostrils. That might be pretty cool. We can go through his nostrils. Try that. Like I said, this is all options. You guys can do this any way you want, whatever you think it looks cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these through. Oh, that does look pretty cool. We could do a knot underneath it. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with this guy, with the pizza man, and I get them all laced up and I'll show you what he looks like. And then I gotta jump out and lace up all the other skulls. Happy with him, turned out pretty good. We got his little uh, crotch bone all laced in there. I'm pretty happy with him. We can always go back later, throw some beads and stuff on. And to lock this down, I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of satin clear right on top of the, uh, the twine, because it'll set it. Um, so this guy I'm gonna call it done for now. I'll move on to something else. So I decided to go ahead and grab uh, the tusk guy. So we got our little short tusk guy. I got one of those crotch bones up on him. And I figured, okay, I wanna go ahead, I wanna lace his mouth up like a, you know, like a shrunken head. So I went ahead and I took a drill. I went ahead and just put some holes right in the foam. And I'm not going all the way through. I'm just going to that surface uh, fiberglass. And again, I've got my dollar store ball of twine. I just want to take that with one of my uh, dollar store uh, skewer sticks. And you basically just want to poke it in the hole. So we'll poke that in the hole. We'll take this one, we'll stretch it over here. We'll poke that one in the hole. And if you don't want to go all the way through, that's fine. You don't, you don't, you don't have to though. So now that that's kind of nice and tight, we're kind of poked in our holes. 
I'm going to take our little crazy glue, the DAP Rapid Fuse. Ah, oh, fused on me again. Okay, here we go. Whew. All right. So we're going to take this. We're going to go right to the little hole. I'm just going to put a dab of crazy glue on there. So that will hold that tight. And again, we can either spray this with uh, satin clear to lock it in. You could put a coat of wood glue on it if you wanted to. Or you could just go ahead and use crazy glue. Because you know some little kid's going to come up at Halloween time and start poking that. So you want to make sure it's secured really good. So I'm going to go ahead and lace up his mouth. Probably lace up his little cos coscix crotch bone. And uh, I'm going to work through all these other schools, get them laced up. And uh, we'll start doing the rest of our details on them. Okay, YouTubes, I think our uh, rope work is done for everything for the heads. I think we're ready to start moving on to details. Okay, YouTube, so we can start accessorizing these guys with all our dollar store stuff, our raffia skirts, our hair pieces, our dollar store shelves. You can see I already threw some beads on some of these guys and I was doing their, uh, their twine work. Uh, kind of reminds me of Aunt Ethel's beads when she's come over for my birthday all the time. Women love to give birthday spankings. They want so much spankings, they're more like slaps, sort of a squeeze at the end. It always creeps me out still to this day. So uh, let's get to dressing these things up.
shirt spray. Okay, YouTube, so I got some perma blood courtesy of uh, Brother Vic from the Tree of Terror. I got a couple of these guys with head wounds I want to touch, so I don't want to go bloody mess, but uh, I do want to definitely put some blood in there, like in this little wound right here, this little one right here. Let it mix with that perma grime I'm up here. There you go. And a little bloody handprint. Give this guy a big bloody handprint right here on top of the perma mud. Ooh, yeah. I kind of dig it. All right, we'll do a little blood, courtesy of Brother Vic. All right, I'm going to finish these guys off. We come back, they are going to be done. We're going to check them all out and see what they look like. Okay, YouTubes, we're done. Let's check these bad boys out. Cannibal barbecue tiki creepy skull torches. Let's do it. All right, YouTube, let's check them out. Let's get up close and personal with these ugly bastards. It's our dollar store raffia grass, dollar store rope. The tusks I made are just resin with wooden eyeballs. And these are fully functioning torches. Gave him a little hatchet wound inside of his head. We got our stack skulls. How cool did they turn out? Went to a little zebra on the stem. We got these guys finished all the way around. This is the big bloody handprint. And just creepy cloth and cheap cloth off Amazon. Again, these guys got my resin tusks. A couple of beads that I had left over from other projects. Some perma grime. A little bit of perma blood. And we finished them all the way around. This guy's missing half a jaw that broke off, so I figured, eh, I'm going to go with it. Did a little face paint on him. Raffia grass and beads, mostly dollar store supplies with Nightmare Maker skulls. So I did make 12. It was so fun, I just made it turn it into a little tiki cannibal factory in there. This one I bloodied up for Brother Vic from the Tree of Terror. If you guys haven't seen us, man, go check us out. We're on Facebook. Uh, go check out my buddies uh, Vic Springston at Monster Misfits and David the Weird Kid Show, guys. We're doing projects year round, man. We just love Halloween and we can't get enough of it, so we're constantly building something. Put this guy back here. For a little less was more. And still fully functioning. This guy I'm keeping for myself. This guy reminds me of Crypt Keeper. I just love this little guy. Got some hair. I'll tie it back before I light the torch, making sure it doesn't get up in touch. Tried to keep all the raffia grass and stuff down low so that it wouldn't uh, get into the open flame. This guy's one of my favorites, so I'm going to keep him for me. I call this guy Crypt Keeper. And just use old wigs to put hair on them. Again, resin tusks, old wigs, dollar store raffia grass, super cheap materials, man. And a Nightmare Maker skull. And we still got us a functioning torch. We fiberglassed. We use flame retardant great stuff, so we shouldn't have an issue lighting these guys and get a lot of years of service out of them. There's another guy, lower tusks, beads, raffia grass. A little ponytail on him. Now right, y'all all remember Anna from the video. I went ahead and did feathers on her from the dollar store. Cut them off with some, uh, I don't know what the hell it was, some dollar stem of some kind. Got her some little dollar store shell earrings. Give her that white hair. 
dirty old lady. Got this guy, remember the pizza man? Big old hatchet wound in the eye. And we just finished him 360. Gave him some hair, siliconed it on. Again, just an old wig I had laying around. And then we got our stack skulls. These are really cool. These came out great just by spreading out the, uh, bringing the uh, canister to the top and making some more room to put another skull on there. Again, beads, dollar store wigs. So that's them guys, the dirty dozen man. I made 12 of these bad boys. Okay, YouTubes, that is my dirty dozen for the cannibal barbecue. Did you guys think I went through all this trouble not to make a custom base? Come on now, look at that. Let's go take a look. That's my kitty litter base. A little Nightmares Maker skull down there, some Dollar Tree uh, cattails. Got a little froggy hiding in there. And just some paint and dressing up. A little bit of permagrime, a little bit of cheap paint. And we got us a custom torch display that's just as gnarly as them torches. YouTubes, that's my Dirty Dozen build for the Cannibal Barbecue. You guys got to meet my Aunt Ethel, and uh, man, we just took some dollar store tiki torches, some odds and ends, some beads, some fiberglass to make sure these guys are weatherproof so we can get a lot of years out of them out in the yard. I think they're all super creepy and ugly as hell. Uh, I think they're going to get a lot of enjoyment in the yard, and plus they're functional, so we can always change out the wicks and use them for years to come. So if you guys get a chance, man, show me what you guys are building on cobwebs and candlesticks. You guys seen the build I did for the display there. I was kind of putting some pictures up there for you. And uh, show your guys' artwork, man. Just check me out on Facebook. The link is below. I want to thank Nightmare Makers for making such cool skull molds. Uh, I just love their products. And I want to thank Sister Michelle Shelty for getting in my ear and putting this little earworm in me is what made me bring this build and to uh, go ahead and run with it and build all these creepy bastards. So uh, I had a blast. It was fun. It was a long video, I'm sure. It was a long build. But I love it, man. So uh, until I see you guys again, man, keep it evil. Just like my Aunt Ethel.